Yes, I'm in a 99.99% of people with a broken index controller. Unfortunately, as you might know, the most advanced VR controllers on the market have always been plagued with faulty thumbsticks. And as I'm out of warranty right now, imagine my excitement with ET reached out to me to send over their new upcoming ET controllers. The compact and weirdly designed controllers aimed to gaming and full and presence in VR, with also our beloved Steam VR tracking. The reality is that I really want and need this to be good. So, should you consider them? Well, it's not easy. Let's get into it. But first of all, a message from the today sponsor. Are you tired of the memory heavy browser while gaming? Well, say hello to Opera GX, the browser built specifically for gamers with some very cool features in there. For example, with GX control panel, you can limit the CPU, RAM and network bandwidth the browser uses, keeping your gaming performance always smooth. And one of my favorite features is that you can stay up to date with gaming news and deals with GX Corner, where you can know the new game sound and also get free games every month. So transfer your setting from your old browser with a quick import tool and get Opera GX for free on mobile and desktop right in the description below and keep up with your fast gaming experience. So thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. So the idea of these controllers is extra cool. I'm pretty sure ET went in a meter room and straight up decided the buttons in VR are useless and they get in the way of immersion. So yeah, they decided let's make a controller without buttons at all, triggers, haha, <laughs> grips. <laughs> let's make just a capacitive surface on top of everything to understand the position of the hand and that's about it. In fact, the idea is pretty cool. At the end of the day, we don't use buttons to interact with things in real life. Right? Unfortunately though, VR is not a one-to-one. -one. VR relies a lot on standard buttons, triggers, grips, to get to menus, inventory, settings, etc. You see, having some friction, having to willingly move a thumbstick or press a button makes a difference to understand the will to move instead of just laying your finger on the thumbstick. Also, unfortunately, games in VR always fall down to the idea of having a controller, like a console controller, to get easily to things, because it's more reliable that in position in space that you might press even when you don't want to. And so that's where the challenging part starts. Talking about the ET, the box experience though is one of the most straightforward out there. You open it, you find the controllers and the trackers. Yes, these are full Steam VR trackers designed by them to have the best tracking possible while playing. The startup guide, yeah, we will need that this time. Two cables to charge everything and some inserts to fit your controllers as best as possible. Because here you notice that the design is very different from the other controllers on the market. In fact, you don't have to grip them or keep them in your hands. All you have to do is to slide them on your first phalange and that's about it. Everything you see here is a capacitive surface. That means that will give you finger awareness in games and experiences. In fact, there's just a single hidden button on the bottom of the controller that acts like a Steam VR button while using them. Everything feels very soft and grippy at the same time thanks to the lined texture. So the first thing you have to do is to slide the trackers right in through the USB Type-C hanging out on top and make them hopefully that needed index controllers alternative. I mean they have the same Steam VR tracking on them. What can go wrong? The idea is to have four areas for the fingers. Yep, this part is actually hollow, there's no trigger in there and the top part dedicated to the thumb that can lay it on the touchpad, on the side of the touchpad, and there is even a touch sensitive part on the tracker itself, and that's pretty awesome. Also where you see the LEDs, it's actually a sensitive touch slider. The controllers are very light, and when it sticks stuck in your hand, it's pretty hard, stop it, but they're pretty comfortable to be honest. The only thing that given the design, they don't really like to you to be married of ever rings, so you just have to go back to holding the stick. I'll stop it now. Now you can use the controllers also as a gamepad if you want to, but of course we're not really here for that. In fact, the idea here is that everything has to rely on gestures. And while the idea in the ideal world is fantastic, well, the execution is kind of a mixed bag. As we said, in a perfect world, we don't need buttons at all. When you interact with something, you actually use your hand. And as a person that believes that the best VR games actually have to rely just on one button, that is the grip button, well, 
kind of makes sense at the end of the day. But VR is kind of different. We don't have that touchy experience. So yeah, movement, for example, is impossible, kind of uncomfortable without some kind of thumbstick, but that's at least solvable with a big touchpad on top. But that's where the software comes in. Where's the limit of the moving button? And when does the gesture start? Well, that's what it is trying to figure out. And the result, unfortunately, is a super frustrating experience. Well, you feel always uncertain of what is gonna happen. Snapping left or right or move when you are just starting to grab something, for example. But how does it work? There are two pinch gestures, mainly to activate the trigger and the grip. Because for the index, if you just close it, well, it's just gonna move the finger in game. It's not gonna shoot. For that, you have to lay the thumb on the side of the touchpad. Yes, this thing round on top is the touchpad and unfortunately it's very very sensitive to the touch so many times you just nap turn if you, if you don't want to or if you're on the left side you just move when you don't want to but I digress you lay your thumb on the side you close the three fingers for the grip and then you close and open the trigger for the grip instead well you don't have to use the index and you just have to close the three fingers under it. Of course, keeping your thumb on it. But that really depends on games. Sometimes you have to use all of them, sometimes just that. Uh, depends if you have to shoot. It's not really that clear yet. The big problem though is that trying to solve the immersion breaking buttons, well, they break the immersion because you have to think so much about the gestures that you have to do. And even after a month using them or trying to use them, uh, well, I still can get it right. But let's be honest, playing with them can be very clunky at times, and it can actually be very good. It depends on what you're trying to do. For example, not all the games are supported to start with, but thanks to SteamVR input, you can actually create your profile. So far, there are profiles for very big games like Boneworks, Half-Life Helix, Bone Lab, Walking Dead Sentence Sinner, etc. And of course, with SteamVR input, you always have the community behind if enough people actually buy this. And that's a good part. Though I don't think that this is where these controllers actually shine, because they're best when you don't actually have to move. You have room scale experiences and you have just to rely on your hands. Hand Lab, for example, from Valve feels like made for it, or Moondust even. Everything feels natural there because you rely on the hand motion and that's it. But when you have to grab things, shoot at things, etc., well, that's where things get very complicated. As you can see from the gameplay, it's very hard to do what you actually want to do. I wish I could show you more gameplay from different games, but yeah, as a mere specter review took a really long time to make because it was just hard to make them work to start with. Because there's a particular order to turn them on, even if you follow it with some time, actually most of the time, it just doesn't work anyway. Maybe just one shows up or sometimes the hands get stuck together or you just find one on the floor. And that's a shame because you can see the work that went into these controllers and in this tracking just by themselves that are actually awesome. They track the controllers absolutely well and they're like shaped like perfection and super light. But yeah, I'm not here to try to bash a new startup trying to make something usable and enjoyable and new and exciting. Actually, it's the opposite. I'm very open to progress. And when I saw this, I really wanted to put my hands on them, like quite literally. And the team at TT is not even new to the market. I remember meeting them in OC5, Oculus Connect 5. That was very long time ago. And after years brewing them, like here we have them. I had this for more than a month and every time I wanted to use them, well, I started trying to connect them and then I spent hour troubleshooting and that's not good. And that's why I waited mostly for the review because I really wanted to give it a fair share, waiting for like updates to fix all the problem, to make them reliable and usable in many applications. Uh, but yeah, I can't wait forever. And I wanna be honest with you about the situation because these are out on the market right now. I mean, I even reinstalled Windows to try to be fair with this. What they actually did, actually, they messed up my USB Type-C driver, so every time now that I connect a USB dock or something, they go in a loop connecting and disconnecting. So yeah, I'm gonna have to reinstall Windows again. As I said, though, I see a lot of care in this product, and I'm sure that in the future, they're gonna be able to iron it out and make it work reliably all the time. So they can become enjoyable. I actually saw many different updates 
come in in this period and that's pretty good. So far though, the AT controller are available from now at $325. And unfortunately, I can't really suggest them right now in this software situation. Maybe some suggestion would be to add a sensitivity slider for the trackpads to make it smaller so you don't actually move or snap turn when you actually are just laying the finger on it because yes, people have different end shapes, so that might actually be useful. Or a dead zone, an external part of a trackpad that we can change. But that's for the gameplay part. The most important thing is that they're gonna make them reliable, that when you connect them, you just play the games without problem. Because unfortunately, they're not there yet. But if the features interest you, if maybe for business or maybe for a particular experience that just require like a good and tracking, well, they're very well built and the sensor worked very well and that I can say. Anyway, I didn't want to make this video to be honest because I think that everyone, every company deserves a chance. I don't like, as I said, to bash on companies. I think there's a lot of work that went in these controllers and I hope they're gonna be able to make it work because at the end of the day, it's a very, very interesting concept and I wanna see them succeed. And well, because they're on the market right now, well, I had to. People might put money into it and let's try to know what they're getting into before it's late. I really hope they're gonna get better in the future and for now, I'm gonna still wait for my thumbstick replacement and uh, the surgery that I'm gonna have to do. Do you like the idea of these controllers though? Do they entice you? So far, I really recommend getting these trackers, they're very light and they're incredible. They track everything very well and they're on their website too, so great way to support them at least. Anyway guys, as always, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like the video, just like, subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech, if you really love the channel, join the button on there, little on further, also the Patreon, thanks for the Patreon, so join the channel of course, and if we have any updates on this, I'm gonna let you know, so I'm gonna give you a green light in case they start to work.